Welcome, <laughs> travelers. If you're new here, my name is Brenna. I am your REM sleep avoidant DM, and welcome to Tales from the Catacombs. This is our tabletop RPG adventure that we are thrilled to share with you. This game uses the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition system and rules, and the setting is a homebrew based on the rock album Razia's Shadow by Forgive Durden. We have a brief introduction to the setting that you can read at your leisure, and I hope you will. Uh, so you can be as immersed in the world as our players are. Without further ado, please enjoy this episode of Razia's Shadow, A Thousand Year Interlude. Let's recap. Session 24, Grasping in the Dark. The novices witnessed the enormous tree in the black misty clearing come to life and attack amidst a swarm of midnight chickens and the decayed Ziva. Through a hard-fought battle, they overcame the ambush. Ziva's body melted away, not unlike how the Midnight Beasts did, until all that remained were the bones of one hand. A few of her knuckles were discovered to be some type of pearl. Stayan did one more sweep of the area for Kalane's sword, but was unsuccessful in finding it. As they felt the dark mist pressing in on them the longer they stayed, the group made their way towards Undra. They stopped within the trees a short way out from the hovel to set up camp and prepare themselves for whatever they may or may not find. You guys traveled further out from that clearing, made sure that you were far enough at least outside of that mist that you could already kind of feel just sit sitting and settling on you. And you were about to make some type of camp, I believe. So what are you guys up to? Viola's going to be unhooking Cherry from the cart and finding a place to get her like tied up and settled and all that jazz. For funsies, can you give me an animal handling check? Let's see if Cherry's calmed his nerves. Okay, animal handling. Got it. Yes, ma'am. Make it's it count. Seven. What are you serious? <laughs> I rolled a two. Have I mentioned how much I love how much Viola loves animals but cannot deal with them? <laughs> Buttercup loves Viola, okay? If this was Buttercup, it'd be a different story. Oh, if only. Oh, no, I think Buttercup was hitting the sauce that day or something. <laughs> Something's we'll going on here. We'll find out. Yeah, you go to take care of Cherry, tie him by one of the trees, make sure he's comfortable. She, I keep saying he. Pistachio was a he. Cherry is a female. Probably just the attitude, you know. But you're struggling a fair bit. It's, it's taken you a while to actually get him to, get her to... <laughs> to cooperate with you. You're spending a, a, a good amount of time fussing over there. What are the others up to while well, Viola is Out struggling? Out of curiosity, mm -hmm. is Cherry large enough to ride? Yes. Like as a standard horse, this isn't a pony like Buttercup. This one is not a pony like Buttercup, no. Okay. Buttercup was not meant to go with you guys that first time. Buttercup was meant to be a joke yeah. and you fell in love with her. So now she's yours, <laughs> but Cherry is a real horse. A it's cool. a real horse. Yes. <laughs> You're a real horse. Real horse. Yeah, Buttercup real is secretly horse, just a person polymorphed. <laughs> <laughs> unless. <laughs> unless. Never it turns out to be Viola's knight in shining arm. <laughs> or it's, a, it's actually Amos. <laughs> He's blended terrifying. in. <laughs> That would be pretty terrifying, actually. Writes nothing down. But as far as what nice. Bo's doing, for now, he's just watching well, the show of Viola wrestling Cherry. Excellent. I love it. Uh, Stain would be checking on Nora because she seems to be fading fast and seeing if there's anything to do to help her. Okay. And... I sound like she's dying. <laughs> she's like... <laughs> she's... She's... Oh, so Nora. She's so <laughs> tired. <laughs> Poor lady, she's a little tired. You just need some tea. Day in, you see Nora. She's still moving a little bit slowly. You see her, you know, wherever you guys are going to be making the camp. She's just planning to assist wherever she can. You know, if there's things to move, things to set aside so Snow has room to do his thing or whoever is doing their thing, she's just there to help. Were you actually approaching her or just watching mm -hmm. her? Okay, so I will approach her and politely ask her to essentially sit and rest. <laughs> she looks quite spent. 
She will also politely shake her head. Um, if there is anything I can still do, I am still awake. I'm still fine. It's you awake, you are. About. Fine is questionable. Perhaps for all of us, but... I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> he just stretches he just a little bit. Chiming in from the back. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks well, for asking. One. <laughs> that's one of us. But she actually will, with an idea in mind, you know, she'll start a small fire or warmth or whatever it is. You know, she you see her kind of start to move towards doing something like that, putting her bag down and helping where she can. Go ahead, roll perception for me. I get to use her new dice. Let's see it. And that roll rolled me. well. That is 27. As she is essentially finding what to do, you do hear her let out a couple of small coughs. Just keeping an eye on her, trying to help out, get set up as well, but keeping an eye on Nora. Once we find a get and get our stuff off the cart, once we, you know, get all of our stuff set up and we have the area for the for the hut, Snow is going to pull Nora aside out of your shot of the others. Just visibly? Is it meant to be they're not paying attention or he's just pulling her away. Okay. Can I talk to you for a moment? Yes, of course. Still not making eye contact with her. Has not made eye contact with her since reading her mind. Once they are a little ways away, out of earshot, you see him just kind of like fiddling with his staff. He's not really sure how to start. You can definitely see the nervousness from him. He is waiting with a very patient smile. I am so, so sorry. Not only for what you went through as a child, but for my part in causing you to relive it. I can understand having memories that one would rather forget. And at, at this point, he'll he'll look up at her. I was at Mossbridge. I know you know about it. There is a, a very stark... When you first looked at her, having mentioned the memories, the smile had certainly dropped. When you mentioned Mossbridge, there's a very surprised look on her face. When things are too quiet, I can still hear the screams. And I wish I could forget it. So, if you hate me for forcing you to relive a past full of suffering, I understand. You've been one of the kindest individuals I've met here. And I never wanted to repay your kindness with pain. Are you saying you were... you were at Mossbridge? Oh, wow. I'd heard that there were no survivors there. I suppose there was one. No, you have nothing to apologize for. Perhaps it was not easy, not pleasant. Perhaps you should not have done that. However, perhaps you've done me a favor. Perhaps it's good to remember why you're fighting, why you're doing what you're doing. I can't imagine what it was like there. I only know it from stories, from things I've heard. I've never been that far north before, but I can't imagine. Is that why you're here? And why you came to this guardianship? In a way, I suppose it is. I don't really know why I'm here. I... I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, I can tell you one thing. Very few of us do. Very few of us know what we're doing. We can only do the best with what we know. Which, in remembering what I do, I think can only help. Right? Strengthen one's resolve, perhaps? You don't wish to forget. No. How can I fix it if I don't know it? I suppose you're right. I will there say, are though... things to be fixed. Yes. However, I will say something like that. Snow, I hope you're not putting such a burden on your own shoulders. You're one person. The fact that you left there alive is a miracle. So if you can fix things by just making the world better than when you found it... That's something too, mind you. Strength can protect what is meek. It nods, but doesn't say anything. Will you be all right? I'm always all right. <laughs> I got that sense from you. She quickly comes in and she gives you a hug. Very sudden. And it's a little, give me an insight check. And that was a natural one. Yeah, so she gives you this hug and it's very comfortable. It's very warm. Something you haven't really felt in a while. Something that, like, maybe deep down you were really just craving. 
yeah, it's not it's that a, deep down. <laughs> it's a nice moment, and it, it does calm you. Kind of feel her her hand patting and kind of smoothing your back a little bit before she steps away. Is there anything else I can help you with, Snow? You can help me set up the tiny hut if you would like. Certainly. And we'll go back to the others. When they walked over, <laughs> Bo brought his familiar out of his the pocket dimension it was in and has it flying around <laughs> Viola the bat. So, Viola, what do you think I should name it? <laughs> I'm thinking yeah. Claude. <laughs> I mean, that seems like a fitting name. Dan, any thoughts? What you should name your bat? Yes. No, there are lots of good names out there. Could always go with something like Batty, like you. I'm gonna go with Stan. Claude. <laughs> Stan, I thought you didn't like that your name was a pun. It's the one thing I want to forgive my parents for, but I do take advantage of it when I can. Is is the bat gonna be around like all the time? Maybe. Mm, okay. <laughs> Wanna pet it? <laughs> I mean, not particularly. It's got a little bit too much, like, just, like, skin and not fur. Oh, bats are quite funny. No, I... <laughs> mm, I'm okay. As Cherry is s slightly perturbed as well at the sight of this bat suddenly being there and <laughs> dancing around Viola's head, you see her kind of, like, snort a bit and her tail kind of flaps in its direction. She starts to go around the tree again, tugging again and giving Viola issue. <laughs> I feel the same way, Cherry. Don't even worry about it. Viola would like to look around for like some like hay or taller grass that Cherry might enjoy. Or if we brought any carrots, I'm sure Viola packed carrots. Well, did you guys pack some food for the day? No. <laughs> we just kind of left. Viola packed <laughs> I mean, there was the bag of carrots that were in the state. Like, she met with Buttercup before he left, and there was all those carrots mm -hmm. with Buttercup. But I don't know mm -hmm. if you stole them from Buttercup. No, I think she's but would have given all of them <laughs> Buttercup. Give me a perception check, please. Can I use Stan's modifier instead? Uh, if you'd like Stan to do the perception check. Can I help you look for carrots? <laughs> I got a 13. There's grass in the area that... Uh, Cherry could probably enjoy. Well, if Viola hasn't tied her up to the tree yet, she'll take her over to she the grass. Yeah, so she will, <laughs> so she can graze for a bit, and then Viola's just like idly chatting to Cherry as they walk away and walk around in the grassy area while she grazes. She keeps kind of moseying away from you. You have to kind of pull her back on course. She moves again. You pull her back to the grass. She gets there eventually. <laughs> All right, so you're feeding Cherry. Okay. Also, we have six days worth of rations in the bag of bowling, so we're fine. Snow and Nora return. Snow begins making the tiny hut. With his staff, he's going to draw the circle of the circumference of the of the hut. And where his staff touches the ground, flowers will bloom out of there. So there, we're just in a small ring of, of flowers, daisies specifically. And then he's going to put his staff in the very center of it, into the ground, so it's standing up by itself. He's going to tell everyone else to make sure you're inside the, the area. If you're not in the area as I'm casting it, uh, you won't be able to get in at all. Oh, you're not good, really casting it. Oh, but so you I have, have ten to be minutes. inside when the spell when the spell finishes. You have to be inside. <laughs> Is there anything anyone else wanted to do in particular while this was being set up? Well, when don't Snow feel like you have to fill every single moment. I'm just yeah. making sure. Otherwise, we'll <laughs> go into the night and you've got a tiny hut. <laughs> Sorry. When Snow walks back over and says, like, hey, make sure you're in this little circle when he when he finishes, Viola will come back over and tie Cherry up, and then she'll say, hey, Snow, so uh, Bo has this bat thing. I'm wanting to know when is, I can't remember his name, but your little lion friend, not little, he's not little, but when is he going to come back and visit us? Because that was way more fun than Claude. Yeah, I don't think he exists anymore. <laughs> Is he like dead? No, he was magic. He wasn't. He wasn't the real lion. I mean, it made a real lion, but only for a short time. But can you make a real lion again? I can make something again, <laughs> but I have no idea what it's gonna be. Okay, I don't. 
I don't love the sound of that because I would not like another bat or something worse than a bat. So, okay, we can just. It could be another bat. But then yeah, we'd have two I... bats, which would be kind of fun. Mm, I think we have different ideas of what fun is. Bats but are to nice. each their own. <laughs> I mean, bats are very nice. it would be boring if we were all the same person. Unless we were all me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm well, kidding, we Saiyan. Don't look at me like that. I don't know how covered <laughs> up your face is right now, but I can just tell that, that looks Bo, underneath it. Bo is going to use his mask <laughs> or tattoo to look like Viola. <laughs> See, look how wonderful this is. Viola goes over and like Link's arm with him and like puts her, pops her foot up behind her. <laughs> I really wish I still had this guy's self so I could do it too. <laughs> oh no. Oh, that would be great. Stay until look at snow. Really is that like a minor illusion to make a foggy kind of version of <laughs> <laughs> Not as good, but still wonderful. The more the merrier. And he'll also use prestidigitation to turn his hair the same color as Viola's. <laughs> you would look great as a blonde snow. But then I don't know, like, you might have to change your name then. I don't know if the vibe would still be there. Well, it wouldn't make as much sense, but maybe that would be the fun of it. It could be. We could get um, one of the girls to embroider some little snowflakes on your cape, and then it would still be lovely. Ooh. Maybe we should do fun. that anyways. We should. What girls? I'm bad with names. <laughs> do you mean like <laughs> Leon, the girl. Ciara, and <laughs> Cynthia and them? Our bunkmates? No, Cynthia. one of them started you with think a Cynthia the little gonna... girls. Oh, the Vivia. little girls. Vivia! The ones oh. that aren't back at the guardianship? The one that sewed the button on. That's the only person I know who knows how to sew. You don't? No? Me? No. <laughs> That, those kinds of activities weren't really my thing. I was supposed to learn how to do that, but my mom taught me how to fight instead. Hmm. I can sew a little bit, but I wouldn't be able to, like, embroider something. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really necessary for me to learn those skills, so I chose not to. We had someone to do that for us. Yes, I'm sure you had plenty of servants. <laughs> they were servants. Hired help. I mean, that's what a servant is. <laughs> okay, you know what? <laughs> my parents married me off, so I don't want to hear it. Technically, it was my grandpa, but whatever. <laughs> Aurora! <laughs> I forgot you were here! <laughs> She's just been setting up a little a, a little uh, campfire, and she, at this, uh, while you guys were talking and doing your illusions, she was just quietly pulling out a portable uh, tea kettle and there's two different satchels and a few uh, little, very small cups. And uh, she also brought out another bag that has a few um, sandwiches in them. She's just been uh, doing that. Give me a perception check real quick, everybody. I rolled a nat 20, take that, Stan. I rolled a 19, <laughs> so it's a 22. 31? I rolled a 25 with a nat 20. This isn't fair. <laughs> You note that as she's pulling everything out and, and placing them around on some kind of something so it's not just like, you know, in the dirt or whatever, you note that the sandwiches all have the crust cut off of them and they're cut in half. Diagonally. We're having a tea party. Whole wheat yes. bread. <laughs> <laughs> on, on whole wheat. Whole wheat I understand bread. cutting off the, the crust. <laughs> cutting off the crust. Stay in. You note that as she is getting the fire, getting a fire started, just while you guys were talking, as she's getting a fire started, the way that she's sitting looks odd. She's not sitting directly, like facing where the fire is. You kind of notice her sitting like sideways, almost as if she is purposefully not looking directly into the fire. No doesn't notice that because he is thinking about Viola's blunder. <laughs> Yeah. It would be nice if you could take that back. I can make you invisible, though, if you would like. <laughs> Actually, that might be kind of fun. How long does it last for? Uh, an hour. What would that sound? Is there, like, 
Nothing. It would just be fun. Do you ever just do anything for fun, Bo? No. Okay, well. As he says no, he turns off the disguise self. <laughs> <laughs> Drops to just a deadpan yeah. expression. Exactly. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I mean, if you're offering... I do 99% of the things that I do just for fun. And he will touch Viola on the shoulder and turn her invisible. Viola immediately (laughs) runs over to Bo and is trying to be (laughs) sneaky and is going to just start, like, (laughs) touching his hair up here and then, like, poke him in the elbow and then, like, run away and poke (laughs) Stan in the neck and... (laughs) Give me a stealth check with advantage, as you are invisible. So it's just regular, because I am wearing my plate armor. <laughs> and it's a regular check. Good luck. Plunk, plunk. <laughs> click, 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 click. That's an eight. The, I That's have a higher passive, passive perception. <laughs> not even his Even passive. Snow can hear that. Bo catches her hand when she goes to touch him. <laughs> I always she looks at him and stay and just goes, oh. She releases herself from Bo uh, when she had hooked around his arm. Thinks she's being very stealthy to like step away from him. Clunk, clunk, clunk. Comes back around, tries to touch his hair, catches her hand. (laughs) Viola then wants to see if she can find like a a dirt kind of patch area and see if she can find some little rocks and then just kind of start like throwing them at people's legs. Like not trying to hit anybody and like hurt them. She's just being annoying. (laughs) <laughs> I was in a mood tonight. Give me another stealth check. That is a 12. That's <laughs> I think much that... better than an 8. Yeah. That's that's a sneak well, that you're doing? It's a stealth. It's, uh, yeah, it's still yeah, lower so than his passive. passive. His passive is a 13. Has a passive of 12 or less. No. Nope. <laughs> so like nope. <laughs> okay, so, so so Viola is uh finding these little just little pebbles and just kind of like aiming and whether or not you guys are purposefully like stepping out of the way and making it look very natural like you know you're just kind of swaying where you're standing or literally she just cannot hit it question do we still have the mind link with Bo? i don't remember that how long lasted. that lasted it was it was, it was like a few hours. hours six hours it was a few hours oh it was back when you made it to the yeah if cast it, it back at the clearing it, yeah yeah he cast it before they like separated at the clearing Okay, so we weren't at the clearing don't for long, a super long but... time. Yeah, so I guess if the it was a... The, the battle felt like, like a long time, but it wasn't. Yeah. It was like 30 seconds. Yeah. So it's still going. And then we travel oh, for I'd an say hour so. and a half. Girl, you're oh. good. I'd say so. I don't remember either. Sorry, anyone okay. who's uh, watching the previous videos in order. <laughs> well, I would... <laughs> So Snow is going to send a message then to Bo that he's going to drop concentration on viola's invisibility <laughs> but don't react and then to pass that message along to stay <laughs> okay but before he passes it along since he sees her picking up the stones in this pile as he's a, like gauging from the intervals that she's grabbing it he's going to soil <laughs> the rocks and one of those times that she would reach down using prestidigitation <laughs> <laughs> and then he's gonna message uh, the information over to stay. <laughs> I'm gonna allow it. <laughs> I'm gonna allow it because specifically Viola said she was being a brat. <laughs> Please, all three of you take inspiration. I don't get inspiration. <laughs> what she said. <laughs> Oh, okay. no, no. You're being a brat. No? No. <laughs> Batty just can see no way. For, for, for so and for both. <laughs> they wouldn't have the ability to do this if it wasn't for me. <laughs> okay, you have a horse to do. No, that. we'll drop concentration, but not look at, at Viola. Act like it's still up. Well, I'm guessing she doesn't know, so she's going to keep running around throwing rocks and... <laughs> right, go over and tap on Nora's shoulder behind her and <laughs> Nora's not Nora was not part of this mind link, correct? Nope. No. Um nope. Nora taps, doesn't Nora's... know to act differently. It's just yeah, everyone else is gonna Nora's act shoulder. like it. Nora looks over, yes. My own just like walks away. <laughs> because she thinks she's so invisible. <laughs> Are you all... all right. Goes back to her tea kettle. <laughs> Who are you talking oh, to, Nora? Just not... She'll walk back over behind Nora and be like, it's a ghost, <laughs> and then walk away again. Hey, Viola, what is going on? 
What are you talking about? Give There's nobody else yet. Give me a deception check, everyone who responds. <laughs> Can Bo just do the help action um, for one of them, for Snow, instead of... But how is he helping? I mean, there's nobody there, Nora. <laughs> sure, who are you assisting? Gaslighting Snow. our captain? Okay. Because Snow so can't give himself inspiration or guidance. We've talked about trauma the help action. This isn't, this isn't bad. That is a 26. Dirty <laughs> <laughs> uh, 20. <laughs> he looks at the three of you, looks directly at Viola, looks back at the three of you, looks There's down no at her that. tea kettle. Did I miss? I must have hit my head when we were. Maybe it's the show. wood you're using. It must be the fumes. If Viola at notices we're uh, looking, Snow gonna... is going to take one of the pebbles and just throw it. Immediately at Viola, it's just straight at her. <laughs> Hello. Can you see me? Did we not? <laughs> Snow, you turned me invisible, didn't you? What are you talking about? Am I about? invisible, Nora? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not, Viola. <laughs> you know what? Fine. Whatever. <laughs> Magic I... is not a simple task. It's possible something was misunderstood. I have no idea what any of you were talking about. Viola just turns and, like, walks over to a tree and sits down and pouts a little bit. <laughs> oh. Don't forget There's the no circle. There's no tree inside the hut. <laughs> There's no tree. You leave There's the no hut. Tree oh, are we already in the hut? I thought this was all happening before hut time. I presume I guess it was coming. minutes of hut creation. Yeah. Let me know I when I be able to. I wouldn't be able to cast another hut. spell while I'm Oh, that's I guess that's true. Oh, so gotcha. Okay, this was pre-hut or post-hut? Post-hut. Okay, post-hut. <laughs> post -hut. It's just a pile of rocks in the hut. <laughs> <laughs> it's just some rocks thrown in, the, thrown in the hut. Probably. <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, when you are uh, done with the very confusing shenanigans, and Nora officially is quite confused, but is smiling, she'll offer what little... She thought to pack ahead, which was still enough for, you know, feeding uh, at least one meal. Just some sandwiches, there's water uh, that she offers to everyone. Hey, did you bring any alcohol? I did not. I don't have any at home. It wasn't part of the care packages I had received. Well, not uh, very caring, not then, very are they? Packages. <laughs> I see there's a consensus going. All right, I'll keep that in mind <laughs> next time I get sick. Stay in and Bo, uh, remember next time we go out, we need to get alcohol will do i can remember things do you remember being I you were pouting i am <laughs> oh, is there anything in particular you guys would like to do this evening no um, will offer to viola since she's pouting either she can braid his hair or she or he will braid hers before bed <laughs> i'll braid your hair and she'll go and sit behind him hair braiding all right him. Fishtail braids. Ooh. Nora or Stan, do you want to a braid before bed? I'll come braid Viola's. And Stan will come behind Viola and start braiding her hair. As she's braiding snows. Join us, Nora. Bo, Me? you can too. <laughs> no, I can't. You but you could be you could be in the back. You can be the last person. No. You know you want to. Do you not know how to braid hair? We can teach you. He's just gonna turn around at that comment. <laughs> Bo, what if... his masculinity. <laughs> Bo, Brutal. what if um, while they were doing that, uh, we tended the fire and let them let them braid as they needed to? I had a question for you anyway. And the fire. Party boobers. Fine. She kind of offers the spot beside her. <laughs> Just gonna go and no, stand we'll by the fire. A, a ditty on his pamphlet. <laughs> Yay, and music. <laughs> she looks up as you seem to refuse to sit again. <laughs> the second time. She <laughs> doesn't she, like sitting down. <laughs> she looks like, have I caused offense in some way? No. <laughs> Are you more comfortable standing? Yes. Excellent. <laughs> Are you always so straightforward with your answers? Sometimes. 
<laughs> Less straightforward for getting there. All right. So, and this might seem to come out of nowhere, but the question occurred to me. You said you were from Fendella, right? Perhaps. I don't think that's a perhaps question. I didn't think you want me to be so straightforward. No, no, I appreciate the straightforwardness. <laughs> then yes. What is it like? Um, it's nice, large, uppity. Um, uppity. <laughs> yes. Clean. Is there something specific you're looking for? A description. I've never been, but I would absolutely love to. Well, you might not get exactly a welcome carpet or anything. You... I'd heard as much. Okay. Just want to <laughs> keep those expectations of yours. No. No, I had an opportunity at one point, but don't have that opportunity now. <laughs> what oh, was wow. that opportunity? Um, someone who could go into Fendella, into Ophidia, who would be more than happy to escort me. But oh. I'm not in communication with that person anymore. What happened? They're not here. So I thought I might get an explanation or a description from you, since you said you were from there. And maybe I will get there one day. Maybe you could get... Maybe you could escort me one day. Um... Perhaps. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. It's alright. <laughs> perhaps I'll get to know you better, and that wouldn't be a poorly landed joke. I apologize. <laughs> I just don't know exactly what you'd get out of it. To see elves in, in their homes and see that long-standing, beautiful culture that they have, their deep honor for the light. I mean, who wouldn't want to see something as beautiful as that? Mm. I shouldn't say it that way. There are people who would not. I would love to see something like that. I guess there's that. I don't know. It didn't occur to me much when I lived there. I could see that. That makes sense. If you're part of it, you're not thinking too much about it. Who is this person? What was the name that you knew? I don't think you would know them, if that's what you're asking. I'm curious. They're not from Fendella. Okay. He was from Vencelot. <laughs> Been all over. Have you? Yes. That's also interesting to hear from an elf. You're just a walking mystery. <laughs> <laughs> well, your friend seems to have traveled. No, not very far. This was only down south. I I lived south of here. This is actually my first time in Yerusha at all. I see. Mm -hmm. So what was their name? You won't know him. His, his name was Joaquin. Can I make a check to oh see God, if you right. would know him, if you have <laughs> met him? Yes, yes, you may. What kind of check is it? Uh, give me a. I got that one. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Never mind. Um, I was trying to go through. Oh, there it is. Found it. I found what I was looking for. No, the name does not at all ring a bell. Oh, he was a great person. <laughs> you couldn't possibly have known him. <laughs> Nonsense. Or, I suppose it's not impossible, but I find it very doubtful. Well. Are you going to disprove that I know him? Well, I didn't even give his full name yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not many elves have that name. Honestly, you're right. <laughs> right, so it's not like I'd be joking around with that. Ouch. Roll a deception check now. I wasn't going to make you roll it. Now you have to. <laughs> All right. Well, so I rolled a three. So that is 12. <laughs> Plus, so 14 with psionic. Mm. <laughs> she looks at you, slow nod. I, you're right, they don't have that name very commonly. Um, but I don't think you've come across, it, it was a very small place where I knew him from. And just a, not even a blip on the map. I, you so very traveled. I doubt you'd stop at a place so small. <laughs> hmm. Who wasn't? Who is the town leader? 
mayor or whatever. I imagine they had someone in charge of the town. Sure, but I was never one for politics and caring for all of that. Um, I, again, I don't think it would make a huge difference. Really, I was just more curious to hear about Vendela. <laughs> but if that's all you know about it, then I suppose that's all I can get from it. Lean, big, uppity? Is that what you said? Yes. And nothing else? I mean, there's plenty else. Is it true why they call it the Crystal City? Is it true why they call it? What? Is there a better way of phrasing that sentence? Uh, why they call it that? Big, beautiful buildings that practically look like they're made of diamonds and other fragile looking and yet not. That's just what I've heard. Yes. Why did you leave? I felt like it. Just felt like it? Yes. Was it something more enticing in Yerusha? Not immediately. What did you discover that kept you here? I didn't come here first. What did you discover elsewhere that kept you there, and then found your way here? Oh, I've just been traveling, you know, life on the road. You seem the outdoors type. Yes. All right, where's your favorite place you've traveled to? You're asking a lot about this traveling deal. Because <laughs> you won't tell me about Fendella, which is what I was curious about initially. <laughs> Well, I'm happy to to keep it from there if you'd rather not talk about it. I was just curious. And then she pauses for a moment, coughs again, gets ready to pour out some tea for herself. I'm fine. Of course you are. Are you sure that tea is actually helping? I suppose it depends on what regard do you mean helping. Is it curing anything? No. Well, is it that making it a that would be curing. I didn't say curing, I said helping. <laughs> a cure would be quite a help, but alas, I don't have that. I don't know that there is a cure. Um, what it does do is help me, it helps calm symptoms. Instead of sleeping and not waking up for six days, I can wake up tomorrow morning. Hmm. Hmm. What about new lungs? You have <laughs> a pair. I mean, I'm sure we could come across some. Get them while they're <laughs> fresh. Well, if you find some that are nice and fresh, do let us know. <laughs> How very kind of you to offer. And they won't be mine. <laughs> that would be tricky. That would be tricky. Sorry, I didn't mean to sound like I was prying. Prying over what? My questions. Oh, they not prying. I'm an open book. <laughs> that you are not. <laughs> <laughs> Nonsense. Insight check. <laughs> if you were an open book, then your pages are stuck. <laughs> or maybe you don't have the literacy you think you do. Oh. <laughs> I should pay more attention. Perhaps you're right. She will also, as she's pouring out the tea and then preparing a, a different type of tea that she could offer the others, not her own, she will also uh, pull out a small bag that has some dice in it, and she'll <coughs> offer if you'd like to play a game while the others are braiding hair. She's just helping pass the time. Sure. We could play Truth or Dare. <laughs> <laughs> huh? <laughs> Forgot you're there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that depends. So you guys done with your hair frolicking? I didn't know hair frolicking meant we couldn't play a game. Yeah, Bo. <laughs> While this is happening, Snow uses prestidigitation to turn just like a strand of Viola's hair blue. So that as Stan is he's going to braid it, all of a sudden there's just like this blue bit that wasn't there before. <laughs> <laughs> Viola, have you always had blue hair? What? Is my hair blue? Viola, a piece of it? Like... She'll oh. help hold it to where you can see. No. It looks pretty with your gold. I mean, it matches my outfit, Ooh, yes. But nice. why is part of my hair blue? 
I heard I it's a side effect of invisibility. She shoots you a glare. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. Did you dye it? No. Why would I dye I mean, to my be fair, hair? I don't know why my hair is the color it is either. Okay, but my hair's never been it blue. Just before. Is. Yours has just been that way for forever. It didn't just like, oh, I got black hair. All of a sudden you wake up and it's white. At least I'm assuming that's not what happened. I mean, just keep an eye on it. About if... a week ago. What? <laughs> You don't remember? When we met, my hair did not look like this. It was not. Just keep it an eye on like it. It looked more like this. And <laughs> Snow will prestidigitate his own hair blue. <laughs> did you change my hair blue, Snow? I have no idea why you would think such a thing. Okay. Insight check. <laughs> Is it 19. worth it? Um, it's always yeah. worth it to roll. No, I definitely rolled like a 32, um, but it's actually like a 12. <laughs> <laughs> blue hair when you first met him. Totally. Just I know if your hair goes from head. blue to green, it's a sign of a disease. Be careful. And then Bo's gonna press the digitation that streak of blue into green. I can take care of that. <laughs> I've got the shovel. <gasps> my hair! That's so nice! This is serious! My hair was blonde and then it turned blue and now it's turning green and I'm dying! Stay, I'll stop braiding her hair and just put her hands on Viola's shoulders and like awkwardly hold her, comfort her a little bit. You know, it's Viola, right. there is. I've heard that there's an opportunity for great power if you die and come back. Might not be no. entirely bad. No. <laughs> no. I don't want to die anyways in the first place. <laughs> you won't be dying until your time has come, and you won't be coming back once you do. Debbie down over there. <laughs> Life and death must be respected. It's all, right. it's all right, Viola. It could be worse. You could have all green hair, and Snow will turn Bo's hair completely green. <laughs> <laughs> Giving Sleeping Beauty the fairies just casting the spells back and forth. We love cantrips. I was gonna carry Gosh. over the a cup of tea to her. Here, this might help. Which I tea? Know. The tea that Nora was preparing that wasn't hers because he okay. said she was making some. Fantastic. Who made this? Nora. Nora, did you make this? I did. <laughs> Hey, she'll drink it. As she goes to drink it, he's gonna shape water to freeze. <laughs> <laughs> All I did was Doesn't poke change him and the throw rocks at you. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright. Presentation, her hair's blonde again. I don't like it when you guys are mean to me. <laughs> I won't prank you anymore. Fair deal. <laughs> she just goes and sits down by the fire. <laughs> You wanted to play a game, Viola? <laughs> I don't know anymore. <laughs> I question everything now. <laughs> Did we eat dinner yet? <laughs> I think you need some food. Yeah, and then Nora will offer the cut sandwiches with the crusts cut off. Um, Viola sits down and eats a drink her tea, and then like every now and then she picks up her braid and like looks at it to check and make sure it's still normal. It's just blonde and it's lovely. Thank you. Your hair's pretty, too. Thank you. Is anybody else gonna eat their dinner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you guys come over, or you take you take your sandwich pieces and... Well, I guess somebody will bring, somebody... bring snow yeah, some, because you can't leave the snow. tent. Oh. <laughs> I can't oh, leave the hut. Cannot... He's <laughs> anchored. The, He's the hut will drop. Yeah, it drops the, if he leaves. The hut will drop if I leave it. So. You literally cannot leave the hut. I mean, you can, and but it once... would just go away. So then he would have to redo right, it. Yeah. But then I'd have to ways. go through the ritual yeah. of casting. Yeah. Again. Oh, yeah. I. The caster can't leave. The yeah, rest yeah. of everyone else. I can. didn't realize that at mm -hmm. all. That did not yep. occur to me. Um, yeah. Nora will bring you your sandwich happily. Didn't. It, when Viola realizes that Snow's like sitting in the entrance to the tent, she'll go over and like sit next to the entrance to the tent so that he's not sitting by himself. <laughs> Nora will turn uh, her her back to the fire, so it's more being able to see see all. Do we Let's have a? <laughs> I 
I don't know what that is. Oh, well, then we'll have to play it. Oh. <laughs> All right. Technically, it's a child's game. Your child's game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, children. Oh, like, Absolutely. Children. <laughs> Nora nods with you, saying, <laughs> Whatever are we going to do with them? I enjoy our company. You don't want to be too quick to grow up. Just watch them. Trust me. Just enjoy it. Was enjoy it a choice? their childhood while they, while they last. Yes. How old are you, Nora? Y'all are depressing. <laughs> That's my whole mood. Hmm. 32. I knew it. You did not. <laughs> I had an inkling. Liar. Look at her. Was, <laughs> was this a mystery y'all that you were discussing? No. No. Sounds like it was. No, we didn't, like, put in bets. <laughs> <laughs> Though if we I did, I would have won. Your excitement. <laughs> <laughs> but if we did, <laughs> yeah, hindsight's twenty twenty, Bo. I'm thirty two. My my birthday's actually coming up in a few months. <laughs> Happy <laughs> birthday! Thank when? you. A few months early. Um, uh, in Italis. In what what month is that? Some no. odd months. Uh, technically, <laughs> it's February. Oh, well, that's a lot of months. Are we in August? <laughs> It's uh, <laughs> that's six months away. Listen, birthdays are birthdays, okay? Fine. Right. She will just say that her birthday is in Atalas. She will be 33. <laughs> so, are we playing Truth and Dare or not? Yes, sure. I can't make everyone tell the truth this time, but it can still be fun. Make them tell the truth? Well, there's all sorts of things you can do with Bane likes making people do oh, things. Yes. Well, technically, she only did it the one <laughs> time. Also. Everyone yes. was just naturally truthful the second time. I'm certain that's exactly always. how it went. <laughs> I'm always um, truthful. I, I'm a little familiar with some elements of magic, but it sounds like if you have to use something magical to make sure someone tells the truth, it's not very trusting. Well, everybody has their secrets. And trust, like death, must yeah. be earned. It's very so interesting dramatic. way to phrase that. She says a lot of interesting things. You'll get used to it. I hope I will. Oh. But in this case, I think there's a level of trust amongst us, so truthfulness should hopefully be understood. Of course. Are we rolling? Yeah, I just roll a, a d20. Alright. This is my 17. super organized... I got a natural 20! I got a oh. natural 20! I got a 19! <laughs> Have a roll off, you two. <laughs> oh, we both know who's going to win this. We don't know. That's a three. Yes, we do. You got a one. Are you kidding? She got a three. She got a three. <laughs> I told you we already knew who was going to win the roll off between Catherine and I. <laughs> it last time you and I had a roll off, you won. So that is true. That is it true. Was a three. <laughs> that was a once in a lifetime thing. <laughs> oh my gracious. Okay, so what have we got? We have uh, stay in Viola. Uh, what did Bo get? 19. Bo, what did Snow get? 17. 17, and it looks like that puts Best Nora I last. Rolled and it was still below. <laughs> still lower than everyone else. Well, not Nora's. <laughs> Nora rolled only an 11. So it looks like she gets to observe and... Uh, and, and learn. And she'll ask as you guys are drawing these cards and, and doing what you're doing. So how does this work? You ask uh, questions or give deaths. It's deceptively simple. Pick a person. Pick a person. They choose truth or dare. If they choose truth, you ask a question. They have to tell you the answer. If they choose dare, you dare them to do something and they have to do it. And if they fail oh. the dare, then you get to ask them two questions. If they complete the dare, they get to ask you a question. Oh. Hmm. Takes three Honestly, people so many, to describe the many rules. Many variations. <laughs> <laughs> now we know that answer. Hmm. I, I see why you might entice someone to be truthful. All right. Um, Bo, truth or dare? Dare. I dare you to give us another dance with snow. <laughs> Fine. Oh my goodness. Technically, I feel like you shouldn't be making me do something for his dare, but I love dancing, so I don't care. 
All right. Only we had some music. Excellent. So I think it was performance <laughs> last time, right? It was performance, yes. And if All it right. wasn't, it should have been. Snow. Uh, Snow will use minor illusion for music for one minute. Like all is clapping along with the music. <laughs> Snow, are, you're insisting on it um, being a a good dance, I imagine. Me. Yes. <laughs> He, he's dancing. I but mean, Stan's the him. one that gave him the dare. It's not Snow's dare. Well, <laughs> Snow can no, throw I'm it. I'm saying that's what I'm saying. I'm saying is Snow helping him along as far as the performance is oh. concerned. Um. <laughs> or is Snow kind of? Which kind is of funnier? <laughs> Step on his toes. You, <laughs> you can give him advantage. You could not do anything. You can give him disadvantage. <laughs> oh, that would be funny though. Yep. He will, <laughs> can, can I, can I make it look like I'm doing really well while actively trying to trip him up? You can give me a deception check. That would be Wonderful. against him. Hmm? What is the deception check versus? Like, is it Bo's passive or can he do insight? Um, that was... Well, I feel like Bo will know. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. what I'm wondering. It'd be against the others. Yeah, oh, I see. Yeah, for me. Oh, well I see. <laughs> we kind of all, yeah. Yeah. Super low deception. It's only 14. 14. Okay. Almost as low as I can get. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's so pretty. That's decent. Okay. Viola, what is your passive perception? 15. Okay. Yeah, no, Snow, you do your thing. <laughs> you, uh... So that, that, how is Bo giving... rolling? That's Dude. giving you disadvantage because okay. he's actively trying to trip you up. <laughs> Stayin would also note what's going on, but I will let her decide how she wants to handle that. <laughs> so that is a fourteen with psionic. Okay, I think Burn that's a, a very nice. Yeah, I think that's a very good <laughs> dance. Whether or not she knows that what Snow was up to. What about Nora? No, Nora's just enjoying herself. <laughs> as, as far as you can see, Nora's enjoying herself. No, we'll give a dramatic, a dramatic bow with a flourish of his, of his cape. <laughs> you should bow too, Bo. It was a beautiful performance. No. <laughs> Bo wants to hit things. <laughs> <laughs> that was splendid. I, well, I shouldn't say I'm surprised between the two of you. The dance one? You said another, so they've done this before. Oh, yes. Let's see. Bo. This night Truth sucks. Or dare. <laughs> dare. <laughs> Let's see. I dare you to do some little like uh, ballroom dancing with snow. What? <laughs> I'm sure you know how to dance. <laughs> <laughs> He'll let you lead. <laughs> Every single time uh, they do a turn and he sees Viola, he's glaring at her. Viola's <laughs> smiling right back at him. So happy. Would it make you feel better, Bo, if I was a girl? No. Because I can make it I can make it happen. No. <laughs> Viola will applaud just so loud when you guys I... are done. Viola, how'd your dad die? We should capture it. Stan, why Viola. don't you talk to your parents? <laughs> Stan, why'd your dad die? <laughs> how'd your dad die? <laughs> he's still alive. I think he lost a foot, but he's alive. <laughs> he might have lost a foot. Go back and watch that one, Josh. <laughs> she doesn't know that, though. Um, true. I... There was no need to. Our path separated, and I don't look back. I tried once, and they didn't respond. So, not trying that again. Oh, before I forget, speaking of trying and not responding, is there a way that we can get a message to Helena tomorrow? Or tonight? We have her things. Possibly. It would probably have to be tomorrow. That sort of magic takes, takes a good bit. And, yes. Okay. Well, Viola, you're up. Hmm. Snow. Truth or dare? Dare. 
I don't dare you uh, to do 20 push-ups. How about 10? 15. Deal. <laughs> Didn't expect the haggling to work on a dare. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Remember, I didn't mine either. is too charisma. She'll go for whatever. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> let's, let's have an athletics. Let's have an athletics check. What did we agree on? 15 push-ups? Mm-hmm. Okay. Natural 20. <laughs> Ooh. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Plus zero. <laughs> yeah. You needed, a, you needed a 15. Make sure his cape is aside, not touching, not all in the dirt or the grass. Prepares himself, finds a place for his hands, and he starts with the ease you weren't expecting necessarily and does some very clean push ups. Some very clean it and very solid. Because he push -ups. doesn't weigh anything. <laughs> yeah. We love body weight. There's not much to push up. <laughs> push up um, no. I was very impressive. I don't know that I can do that many push-ups. Oh, I could. I could do way more than that. Violet, would you rather be one foot tall or ten feet tall? Oh, ten feet tall for sure. You know how many people I could, like, just... If I was ten foot tall... wouldn't be able tall? to fit inside buildings, though, would, would be the thing. You I have to just stoop all the time and ruin your back. my own building. It's fine. Technically, you can I make mean, your own building now. <laughs> That'd be quite attention but, need while you're traveling. I don't <laughs> have the coin for it. However, if I was 10 feet tall, I would never be out of a job because I would be the best bodyguard ever. I'd be getting hired to retrieve things and protect people all the time. Not if it involves stealth or blending well, it in. Doesn't happen anyway. Now does it? Bo. <laughs> you might hide behind a great big oak tree. <laughs> Thanks, It'd be fun though. <laughs> Just picture her standing in the woods. I'm a tree. I'm a tree. <laughs> Maybe no trees just yet. Perhaps not trees. You're right. We can branch out from that to be more creative. Oh, stay in. Oh, wow. Stay in, stay in. I believe you get one more question, one. don't you? No, just just one. Uh, oh, you get two if you fail. That's right. right. The other person. <laughs> All right, Viola. I, oh, truth or dare. <laughs> Oops. You know what he's wanting. I wonder you know what he wants. To pick. Uh, I'll pick truth. All right. Hmm. Why do you like animals so much? Mm, I mean, you kind of know how I grew up a, a little bit, at least a little bit of insight into how I grew up. I didn't have that many friends growing up and... Animals are, they never lie to you. They're, they never hurt your feelings. They make good companions. Mm. All right, Snow, it's your turn. Stay in truth or death. Truth. Is she wearing her mask and everything? She likes y'all. She trusts y'all. She has her, she'll have her hood down and her mask down. She had a mask down anyway to eat. But That's true. Then he looks at you with like very intense eye contact. Who's the hottest person here? And you can't say yourself. <laughs> I mean, that's because I'm the obvious choice, but... <clears throat> wow. <laughs> um, you know, only one of you has admitted to enjoying playing with fire, so if we're going by that measure, it'd be Bo. Yeah, you know Stay that's in. not what I meant. Stay and we'll just think for a second, chuckling at her and jokes that she's made, and then she'll just uh, point at Viola. Duh, she'll like throw her braid over her shoulder. I mean, do you see that braid? It's just a work of art. The braid yeah. makes the entire You did that. Up. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Oh, that makes it my turn. Mm -hmm. Um, gosh, all right. Viola, pick on you a little. <laughs> Truth or dare? Um, dare. All right. You said you could easily do twice as many push-ups as snow. So I said I could do more, not twice. <laughs> well, 30 is a nice even number. Fine. <laughs> so athletics roll? Yes, ma'am. That is a dirty 20. I'll allow it. And uh, you prove your word, prepare yourself, find a good spot, nice and even. They're not all perfect. You're definitely feeling it towards the end. The last like- Let's have all of her plate armor on Yeah, <laughs> the last like nine or eight of them are really, face is getting red, but you managed to complete all 30 push-ups. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, now I get to ask you a question. That's right. I have that's one in mind. All right. But I feel like it could be kind of mean. And I'm wondering if I should take it easy on you since it's your first time playing. You don't have to do that. <laughs> hmm. Ooh, actually, this one I think will be fun. When did you know 
you were in love with Captain Pelican. <laughs> I'm dropping things. <laughs> um, Just think back to the day they did that amazing portrait of you two. <laughs> mm-hmm. She pauses for a, a long moment. Hard to say. Um, I would honestly probably describe it as love at first sight. Uh, he was... Also, describe us with, when you first saw him. Uh, all right, all right. Um, I was in the middle of traveling, actually on my way to Yerusha, and he was on some type of assignment. Uh, he was on this beautiful steed. He had, the armor wasn't perfect, but clearly had seen some combat. Um, hair somehow pristine a smile on his face uh his eyes looked a little stern like he was saying something to the person next to him but somehow they were still kind and determined um and they spotted me on the road offered to assist me in travel and um i traveled the rest of the way back with them when they were on their way back to uh Hazelfred, in fact. So you were his damsel in distress. You could say something like that, sure. It's very sweet. Insight Thank check. <laughs> yes. Thank you. It's like somebody do it. <laughs> well, insight, that's an eight. Eight total? <laughs> yeah. I guess I can try a psionic and see how much that helps. Oh, it's a six. So hmm. could be 14 if that makes a difference. There's a hesitancy in her voice as she's recounting the tale. It's a little hard to tell if it's because she's, you know, maybe blushing a little, a little embarrassed, versus if there are elements of the story that she's not being entirely forthwith about. But I mean, neither have you guys, you know? So does that mean I have to use the die? Oh yes, check it off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell if that was a success or not, so. <laughs> it's difficult to say. But you might lean on, lean in the direction of there are elements that, you know, it's not the full story, perhaps. She's telling the story, but not the full story. Okay, but we'll remember this for later. So, one more round? Or is it bedtime? What time is it, actually? It's not actually all that late, if I recall. <laughs> you gotta go to um, bed at some point. <laughs> yeah, you guys had, yeah, I feel like it's no later than, like, Six or seven or something. I think I think oh. we said that they arrived there about six. Maybe I'm missing. So we got there around five-ish, and I mean, uh, regardless, it's yeah, like it's evening. You guys are welcome to relax and head to bed if you choose to. I mean, we can do another round or just go same. Okay. So yeah. no, truth or death? Truth. All right. Um. Hmm. What? Mm. Go on. Um. <laughs> what is your favorite memory with Taryn? Hmm. Favorite. Hard to choose out of everything that I've ever done with my sister. Probably there was this time where we built a fort in the woods behind where we live. Um, we were 11 years old and that was a lot of fun. Um, I wonder if it's still there. I hope so. There was also, though, there was also the year before that, she got a crush on a boy and I jokingly told her that she should kiss him and she, but then she did in a panic and that was probably the hardest I ever laughed. All right. I haven't teased her about that in a while. I should do that. <laughs> he just Where like takes sister? out a little bit of parchment and makes a note <laughs> on it and puts it back in his bag. <laughs> Nora He's asks him about this in the next letter. <laughs> Nora asks him where his sister is. Uh, currently, uh, Fendella. Is everyone going to Fendella? Are we going to Fendella? Well, I mean, we're or not. We're not in Fendella, so. Or I, from what, there. What do you mean? Well, I was discussing with Beau how I'd love to visit Fendella one day. It sounds very nice from the way Taryn describes it. How does she describe it? <laughs> <laughs> he just said nice. I called it nice. I feel perhaps Snow and if his sister is anything like him might have a few more eloquent words for someone as illiterate. Uh, as I am. <laughs> so, uh, she, the way she describes it is that everything shines there. Um, which I suppose makes sense with the name Crystal City. 
uh, it looks fragile and yet like it could crush you under the weight of so many diamonds. That's beautiful. How did she get in? Uh, through her tutelage, I suppose. Um, she is a very talented, extremely talented wizard. Um, the best, in fact. And she arrived there uh, via teleportation circle, and I suppose the rest of her classmates with her. Um, if she was the best, wouldn't she be teaching? Not tutoring. Well, eventually, eventually, the student uh, becomes the teacher. Yes. So she's not circle? the best yet. Did she mean that she took a teleportation circle and then travelled to Fandala through Marin's uh, Eve? I suppose. Don't think so. I think oh. it was just to Fandala. Why? Is that weird? I might think so. I don't think Why? Ophidia doesn't allow teleportation circles directly into it. At all. Like the whole. Not from one of the blended kingdoms, so to speak. Perhaps Maybe it was just a, mis a misunderstanding. Maybe they change. Maybe uh, they allow They do not for... change. He's right. <laughs> I mean, they, they must have. It probably had something to do with uh, the person she's uh, working under. I don't remember his name right off the top of my head. Uh, but he's, like, very important and famous. So I'm sure he could. He might um i i don't know it's only what i understand is that teleportation circles are not welcome from the blended kingdoms into the purest kingdoms not ophidia anyway certainly they tend to be rather protective of their borders i mean she did say they're rather obnoxious i suppose <laughs> different certainly but i believe on viola mm. hmm <laughs> Dan, truth or dare? <laughs> dare. I dare you to smell Bo's armpit. <laughs> <laughs> so he just looks. Speaking of children. Confused. <laughs> and yes, yeah, just reiterates children. You're all children. Um, Don't I get a say on this? <laughs> I didn't get a say about the dancing. <laughs> you could have refused. It would have. Ah, what's uh, the fun in that? However,. That seems like it'd be very uncomfortable for two of us, so I will forfeit the dare. <laughs> <laughs> so, for my first question, if you could speak to your parents again, what would you say? And I would, if you wanted just mom, just dad, both of them together, however you want to interpret that. I mean, they're both the same, about the same to me, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I would ask them if they're well. Okay. And then... Have you ever betrayed someone very close to you? Ooh. <laughs> like the whiplash. <laughs> <laughs> She's learning. <laughs> She's learning <laughs> from both. <laughs> uh, I think the answer might be yes. Sounds like it wasn't intentional. It was uh, complicated. As many things are. I mean, you could even say perhaps I betrayed my parents by leaving them. Or that, uh, yeah. It's an interesting question. Why did you leave them? It's not your turn, Snow. It was... Don't just ask me a bunch of questions. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> Nora asked. Our, our lifestyles not align. And it was better for me to not be under their roof anymore. Are they in a Probably cult? No, I she's don't... in the cult. Well, they could be in opposing cults. This doesn't sound Ooh. like cults. I don't think they're in any cults. They're just minus. Um, you know the culture there. The You've been around Eustrom. Yes, well. Oh, I love the Eustrom. You, uh, has everyone been to Eustrom? Only the tavern. Oh, I'm checking. But it was an iron tavern. <laughs> I'm checking. <laughs> I never ventured into the tavern. I can't imagine elves in Eustrom. I find that fascinating. I can't How? find it on the map, so I'm going to guess no. <laughs> elves aren't very common now. At least not that I remember, but I... I was 14 when I left, so what did I know? What? That's very I left young because it was time. Hmm. And yet... That's about average. <laughs> you all leave home at... between 12 and 14. Oh, well. Better get kicked out. <laughs> then I guess that's just you and I staying. <laughs> yes. Though, um... Sometimes I think I should have left much sooner. It would have saved quite a lot of strife. 
Much younger than that, I hardly expect you'd get far on the road. And if you had changed the events of the past, you might not end up in the here and now with us, and we're happy you're here, so. Maybe she's not happy, she is. Oh, no. Don't be so pessimistic. No, no. It is good to be here with you. And it is nice to have people that, even if you don't understand, have a respect in some way for the different gods and the way they work. At least a little. Hmm. Well, it's my turn, right? (laughs) Sounds right. All right. Nora, truth or dare? Um, I dare. Hmm. You know He's what? Just slowly sitting back. Why don't <laughs> you dance with Viola? Viola jumps right up. <laughs> All right. She'll get up. I don't know that I know any dancers. Does it matter? It's okay. I gotcha. Just follow my lead. Oh. You want slow music or fast? Um, Viola will probably say the name of some traditional ballroom kind of dancing thing that she knows from her past. I'm guessing it would be moderately slow. I'm not sure. Okay. No, we'll just do a very simple melody, because I doubt he knows the very particular thing that she made. <laughs> <laughs> well, he knows a lot of stuff, a, but not only a only intelligence know. history. Didn't usually perform for nobles. <laughs> it's always nice to have in your repertoire. Make yourself feel fancy. History, you say? Mm-hmm. Seventeen. You know, it just rings a bell. At the very least, like a, a a bridge into a chorus. Just rings a bell for you. Okay. He'll, he'll play it then. All right. Viola is to trying to do well to help Nora out. Okay. <laughs> we'll, Bo we'll is not her. easily pleased. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> he knows proper form. You know, that's fair. That's fair. Why didn't I get such a wheeling dance partner? <laughs> I dropped my knife. You weren't even dancing. I didn't pick one on oh, purpose. Well, Stan didn't pick one on purpose. I just, I guess I'm just taking credit for the, for, for starting the train of Bowen snow dances. <laughs> she rolled an 18. The standard was 20. <laughs> uh huh. It was pretty good, but not good enough for Bo. Okay. It was the same standard Viola had for her push ups. Uh, <laughs> Nora is able to kind of follow your lead, Viola, to k- even get her as far as she got. End the dance with a beautiful, a beautiful swoosh. <laughs> she will, she'll mimic from you, and then do a very awkward curtsy towards Bo, who had <laughs> given her the dare. It was okay. How about we just call it a... How about we just call it a net even? I won't ask you a question. You don't ask me a question. An open book. Sure, certainly. That's how you'd like to play it. I'm fine I'm being giving. I appreciate it. Thank you. So it's my turn? Yep. Mm -hmm. Bo, truth or dare? Dare. I dare you to tell me the names of everyone in your immediate family. That sounds awfully <laughs> like a truth. It's still a dare. <laughs> I dare you to do it. All right. Let's see. There is Reginald as my father, Gertrude as my mother, and Florence as my sister. Inside check. Inside check. <laughs> if someone wants, if you want to roll insight, you are welcome to. So you are welcome to roll deception or persuasion. I'm going to use my inspiration for this. Okay. 16. Everyone's just like leaning 22. in and squinting at him. 25. It's the meme. <laughs> it was 22 and 25. And what was the other one? What did Viola get? Oh, I only, I thought she had 16. 17 or 16. I can't remember what I said. Yeah. Well, I don't feel I like using a psionic. So he actually only had a 14. So he's just going to shrug. It was a dare. It wasn't a truth. You didn't say you dare me to be truthful. No, I dared you so to then... tell me the names of them, and you didn't do that. So that means I get to ask you two questions, right? Two truths. So the first truth, I want to know the names of everyone in your immediate family. <laughs> <laughs> insight check. <laughs> Another insight check. <laughs> I... Can I request a different one? Why? 
Because I don't want to say it. I'm not going to ruin your family's reputation. I could write a song about them if you want. No. A diss track? No. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just have it be something else? <laughs> All right. W then my first truth is why do you not want to say? Well, I don't feel comfortable talking about people I haven't seen in a while. Insight. Check. Because. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> Wait, is it insight check happening or is it because happening? I think the because would come first. Both? Sure. <laughs> let let him finish. Uh, let him finish his questions, and then. Is because part you. two of your questions? No, it's just asking for the reason, <laughs> which is still the first question. Well, it just don't really see much reason to bring up people I haven't talked to in a while. Well, the reason would be we are talking. We're doing truth or dare. It's a game where you have to do the dare that you're dared to do. Or tell the truth that you're asked. I just would rather that remain personal for now. Alright. And then you still wanted to do insight? Uh, why not for the heck I of feel it? Like you don't need to do. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't much to go on, but I suppose if you want to. You know, it's a 27. Um, yeah, that was actually... <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, in theory, he could beat it, but I mean, he is being honest in this situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Saiyan right. certainly believes Second that truth. was rather uncomfortable. <laughs> I feel like everyone can tell that. <laughs> <laughs> Nora's just like watching between everyone, like, what is happening? <laughs> I love the mood right. shifts that Second... we're getting. <laughs> Second truth. Um, for what occasion have you worn a dress? So. That was for stealing something. That was a disguise? Yes. What was, what was the disguise? Me in a dress. I feel like you would just look like you in a dress. That's not a very good Well, disguise. I mean, there was other things. <laughs> Basically, I figured I could get to what I wanted better if I could get past the guards easier. And looking like a woman was going to be easier than looking like a guy. There's some, like, some truth to that. Yes, it was a fancy dress. It was a bit of an event. <laughs> what kind of event? What color was it? Blue, and I don't remember. <gasps> don't remember. You don't remember. I don't remember the event. I just used it as a way of getting to what I wanted. What? Maybe it was a birthday. That's fair. Were you feeling something birthday. cool or just like whatever? Mm, I'm not entirely sure. How long ago was stole? this? I mean, it was quite a while ago, and I did not ask questions. Oh, so it wasn't for you. All right. Correct. Was it for Helena? You're not the one that <laughs> gets the questions. Well, you answered some of my questions, so I figured I'd keep asking. Please just keep <laughs> Why do I suddenly feel like, as your captain, I shouldn't know all this? <laughs> it's fine. I mean, you can just... Technically, we're not even supposed to be out here, right? Like, this is an unofficial, official thing. So, That's what true. happens the in the tent... Well, we're not all in the tent. What happens on the I think the we road? all are in the tent Maybe now. I think we're all in the hut. In the hut. <laughs> what happens no in tent. the hut stays in the hut. <laughs> That's fair. It's true. Actually, so. when the hut drops, you will forget all of the things that you learned as well. It is. That's terrifying. I don't think that's actually true. The way the magic oh. works. These magics are tricky. Viola's now trying to remember what, what all happened the last time they were in the hut. Remember, remember, <laughs> remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot, isn't it? <laughs> mm. Alright, no, I go up. All Finish right. us off strong. Oh... Well, I thought I had an idea, but I feel like Bo's done enough. Unless <laughs> you'd like to show off some prowess. Me? Yes, I, I had an idea, but it was for you, but you had just been answering Snow's questions, so I wasn't going to keep picking on you. Fine, what is your dare? All right. Um, I'm not very good at this game. <laughs> huh? 
So but, now he just like mumbles to himself. Y'all are very good. It was clear she had a dare lined up, but he's only done dares the every single time we've played this game. <laughs> yep. Notice. They probably, probably assume that the truths are going to be difficult to get. <laughs> Why do you think my dare was what it was? Hmm. <laughs> well, he's All just right. a, a gambler, so that's part of the reason. Yeah. And it's fun to ask people to do things. Uh, Nora's having a blast despite the strangely uncomfortable some moments. She has snow first. It's all right if we leave the hut, right? Yes. Okay. It's not until the hut drops that you will forget what you learned in here. Uh, I have to write it down somewhere. Bo, well, it wouldn't be your first time forgetting things. <laughs> Who? Well, oh, me. <laughs> right. uh, there are several people in this place that have had memory problems, apparently. Did you guys mention that term before? Think... Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't think I can't I remember. I just forgot. <laughs> just forgot. <laughs> Bo, will you come with me? Okay. And she will no, go. Leans over to stay and is and is just like, I think she's gonna kill him. <laughs> you know, I think it's a possibility. I've got a shovel. <laughs> yes, yes, she... we know. <laughs> You're a little bit too excited to use that shovel. He will There's take you very out. therapeutic about digging a grave. I don't think that's true. So where are we going? She's going to take you outside of the hut, and you see her kind of gauging. She's, she's looking, and she's going to be gauging between two points. Then she goes into her bag. She pulls out, you know, say, an, an empty... We're going to say she had an apple in her bag. Pulls out an apple from her bag. I dare you to hit this with your dagger from a distance of a hundred feet. And she's going Harper to- Harper dagger. <laughs> she's going to- uh, <laughs> Even the psychic ones only have 60 feet. Yeah. <laughs> Normal daggers only have a 60 foot long range. They don't technically go past that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, do these ones? I mean, they you don't necessarily well. say. So she's going to place She'll place it on a like a low. Oh, good! I thought she was gonna hold it or like put it no. on her head or something. <laughs> put it on her head. That's what I was thinking. She does too. not actually have a death wish. She's going to place it on like like a tree stump, and have you go a hundred feet back. We'll say it's at disadvantage. I'll set the DC. I think that still gives him a better opportunity to succeed while it's still pretty difficult. No, we'll call out a good luck to Bo and give him a D8 bardic inspiration. So I just need to be back this far. A hundred feet. Before and she's going over towards am. the... She, well, the stump. She put the apple on the stump. Yeah, but so where did... A hundred feet back. I mean, do they have a measuring thing? How are they supposed to gauge this? <laughs> 50 feet of hemp and rope? We have plenty of rope! Oh, yeah. <laughs> we do have 150 feet total, I think, in the bag of holding currently. Let's measure out 50 feet. Or 100 feet with 50 so feet. So he's going eyes. to tie the around, but instead of just going straight across, he's going to run up a tree holding the rope. So that way he's up at an angle and lets gravity help it steer towards where he's going. So it's going to be 100 feet, but it's mostly vertical instead of horizontal. Okay. She didn't specify. Yeah. And then he's going to use his inspiration so it's not disadvantage. Okay. <laughs> and you have a D8. Yeah. So is the hypotenuse still a hundred feet though? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's using he the measuring. yeah he's using the rope to keep it there. So that is twenty one. Okay, that's with everything. Yep. And disadvantage. Well, not disadvantage because he used inspiration. Okay, you launch the dagger, skillfully using the gravity to hopefully get it where it needs to go, but it does fall a little short. Of the stump, the apple remains untouched, and the dagger and the ground. You gave him one that's higher than 20? You're out of the range of the weapon altogether. <laughs> I thought you were going to breeze that. <laughs> he was far too giving with his dance. <laughs> 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 I didn't realize we could go above 20. Nora picks up the apple and picks up your dagger. Turn, turn it to you. The dagger would have just evaporated. Oh, it, he... it was a special one? Oh, never mind. Well, yeah, the other one's, I mean, that one at least has 60 foot range by default, so. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> She'll just take the apple. She'll offer you the apple. <laughs> Almost. He just walks past. Bites the apple. <laughs> All right, so that means I ask you two questions. 
Oh, one question. Two. Two questions. All right. Honestly, I thought you were going to get it. <laughs> Why were you asking me about Gen? I was curious. She kind of looks at the others to gauge, like, is that an acceptable <laughs> amount of answer? <laughs> Here, I th thought you were an open I mean, book. he answered the question. <laughs> it's pretty... I see. Not really, but it's the most you're going to get out of him. <laughs> I'm seeing that. All right. Um, he's an open book. Until he's not. Your pages are stuck. All right. Do you want me to blank. expand and say, I was curious <laughs> if you would know about it? I suppose that's something. Well, I figured um, the rest was implied. All right. What about it sparked your curiosity? Well, it was the last guardianship. And now we're in a new one. So, it's good to learn from history. I see. All right. I guess that's... I guess those are my questions. And how much did you learn? Honestly, painfully little. There doesn't seem to be anything about it. Which would be odd if it actually is a guardianship. They tend to be big, exciting events when they do happen. I didn't know about it. Then again, I suppose I'm not from that region. Maybe it was... I don't know, maybe that one was a little more region-specific. How did you hear about it? I was track lots of information. Gotta keep up on what you humans are doing. Mm. I can't tell if you're more representative of elves than the other person I've met. <laughs> maybe I'll find out one day. Anyway, I think that was my turn. Oh, that was the end of the bit. round. One more, or settle in for the night? I might be ready to figure out at least if um, we're keeping watch or anything like that. I mean, Apparently nothing can get in the hut. Safer, so what about Cherry? Well, I'm sure Cherry will make a noise. Mm -hmm. Also true. I imagine you still wouldn't want something sneaking up and waiting just for the hut to come down. No, I'll set up an alarm. We'll be awake. And we'll have those alarms. I feel better with the alarm, so I'm cool with just sleeping. All right. So are we sleeping or are we doing another round? Uh, I might sit out, uh, get ready to rest, perhaps. We don't want to do another round talking about... Eustrum did spark a story I'd heard that y'all might find interesting. Bill in particular. Story? <laughs> yes. Tell it. I mean... It's just one of those stories that uh, the older miners like to sit around and I'd spend days in the quarry sometimes because when you're a young girl who can heal people, that's useful, especially with uh, mining accidents and the like. And so I'd hang around and I got to hear a lot of stories. Many of them don't care to remember. They emphasize a lot of dark and gruesome details. But this one was one of the more popular ones that got told. And no one ever quite told it the same way twice. More legend, perhaps. But it was a story of a simple farmer and their wife and his wife who lived in Eustrom. The the husband decided to, as the story goes, set off for glory. Because there's not a lot of glory and fame to be found in Eustrom, especially the farmlands and such. But he was even supposed to be going and make a whole new city just for him, his wife. His future brood of children wanted to build something beautiful for his family. But then the city he went to, supposedly, it had been swallowed by... We faced some terrifying creatures. Think of those, but ten times worse. The darker the creature, the better in the story. Creeping trees have nothing on the terrors that supposedly swallowed this town whole. And uh, they say that the farmer's body was found and it's even worse off than Zevas. Didn't have the benefit of just fading away into dust, but rotting away, piece by piece, pecked and pecked. But, and I should have put this together sooner, I knew the name Bo was always familiar. But uh, there was only one piece of information that was always the same in these stories. And they said that the farmer's name was Bo Evanwood. And so, don't know if you picked that up somewhere, if you're a relative, maybe a surviving 
child that we didn't know about, or it's just legend, and legend happens to reflect reality sometimes. But Eustrum, Bo Evanwood, I knew it about something and finally put it together. Hmm. Sounds like a boring tale. Huh? I'm not nearly the storyteller Snow is. No gives like a slow clap. <laughs> <laughs> that is quite the story. And quite the yeah. coincidence. Was um, that uh, the whole story? That's all I remember. Doesn't have a happy ending, I'm afraid. Oh, it, it was so good. <laughs> Insight check. Insight check on whether or not I had a happy ending. On whether or not you still enjoyed it. Oh. You get him, slugger. Well. Go for it. My old like fat stand on the shoulder and just like let's leave the storytelling up to uh, Snow in the future. Yeah, it sounds like something you just made up. I didn't make it up. I couldn't even... My, the stories I'd make up would be worse than that. Yeah, clearly, Bo. Come on. Use your brains. I don't know. It just seems very <laughs> coincidental using my name in your story. It does seem coincidental now, doesn't it, Bo, that this is the same name? I wonder... I Why wonder is it... if that's your real name or not. Why is it more believable that that story is true and not made up on the spot? Because I don't think Stan has... Up more things than she does. <laughs> Which would only make it more believable when she does make up something. I don't... If there was reason to believe it. But it doesn't not... really matter if stories are true or not. Okay, Bo, is Bo your real name or no? You already asked me that. Last time we played Truth or Dare. <laughs> I don't remember what the answer was. <laughs> I told you my name is Bo because Evanwood. Because we were in the hut. <laughs> You didn't even have that spell back then. <laughs> <laughs> the no, he didn't say that. I mean, I, that was me saying that, not him. <laughs> oh my god! It's just a story, but I just found it interesting. Whether or not it actually has a connection to you, perhaps your name's unique. Perhaps it's not. Bo, do you have a wife and kids somewhere? Goodness, no. He did seem to be now a little that answer, agitated. I believe. If it weren't true, <laughs> there's no sense in seeming to get agitated about it. Not agitated. Not anymore. <laughs> I'm only joking. Mm, don't, be don't be upset. I'm only joking. I think that's his default oh, mode. It's a lively bunch. I see <laughs> that. Why don't you tell that story right before we're going to bed? Now I have the creepy crawlies. There's nothing to worry about. I don't know. It sounds like there's certainly something to worry about. Out I mean, if I dark. just made the story up, then there's nothing. Correct. I don't like either of dark you. Dark right is something to be afraid of. <laughs> Without the dark, we wouldn't see the stars. I mean, there's plenty of pretty things to look at in the daylight, too. I think it's a different sort of dark that we fear than the dark that reveals the light. And yet, those do dark, what cloudy made you nights feel better? You can't see the what stars. I said or what you said? You got me there. You don't have to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Would hate to hurt your pride, a oh, great champion of the light. <laughs> it does seem very fortunate that we have someone like you. No, we'll just like give her. <laughs> of course, it's fortunate. Don't it's make meant your to hand be. any bigger than it already is. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I mean, Atala meant for it to be like this. She's goddess of vocations, wanderers of journey, of light itself I'm in charge of dead people no some lotals your burial ritual then why are you all about dead things i'm just done she's just I don't ego. know <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh always been where well, there is life there's another side to it another side of life is death both must be represented and treated with respect well, Make it sound like you I'm can't have life without it. Check on Cherry real quick before <laughs> we head to bed. I've never known life without death. There's a lot more than what you know. Obviously. Didn't know what I, I was didn't. until a few days ago. Weeks ago. Really? Yeah. Seems a difficult secret to keep. Not when 
I suppose I didn't know when you first walked in, but you were quite covered when you first came in. Growing up, ASMR were fables. Yes. Tales. I've, legends. I've told my fair share. <laughs> not meant to actually be thought of as real. Especially not in my town. Hmm. Well, that's something that you don't know, then. All stories are true. You've said that before. It doesn't make it true. <laughs> As if it's a story, apparently it is. Well, no, it wasn't until Snow and Bo helped me realize what I actually was, that I actually learned it. How did Bo help you? He's... I have the age. And I've He's met them a lot. before. He's seen much. <laughs> but you didn't know before. <laughs> What made you put it together? Well, she's not the first ASMR I've seen. She fit the bill. Check some boxes. Right, but you didn't know at first, so I'm, I was asking I what, assumed like, she already knew ring. what she was. There are some unique qualities to someone like her. It's possible that put two and two together? I mean, yeah, look at her. Yeah, she's beautiful. I was going to say pale. <laughs> That too. I'm kidding, you look great. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> um. Yeah, I know you know. <laughs> <laughs> really didn't know. No. You feel better knowing? I think so. It'd be interesting to wonder what knowing earlier would have meant. But I trust that it is part of the path I walked to find out when I did. I think we're lucky to have someone who is considered a champion. I don't know why it's... Uh... I, I missed whatever joke was connected to that, but every story I've ever heard involved Anazima being a beacon of hope, just a pillar of light. So I'm certainly shocked and grateful. Seems right that I am here, and whatever that may bring for others, I hope it is good. I think it will be. I think it is. You should show that tree. That's... It's what I'm meant to do. Build trees. Exactly. You're catching on. The root cause of the dark. Oh. Hmm. I believe you. Alright, well, I'm gonna go out for a walk. You guys... Don't get lost. As he's leaving the tent, though, he's gonna mind link to stay in. Stay in. In a few minutes, come outside as well. <laughs> Meet me at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> when the moon is full. <laughs> Stay in, Will. Wait a few minutes. Head north. I should probably give you a direction. <laughs> <laughs> and then she'll I'll stand up and say I'm going to go and uh, clear my head for a minute. And she will oh. walk out and head Get the lost. way that... <laughs> Is you say just get lost or don't get lost? <laughs> <laughs> it's a don't get lost. Get lost, loser. And I kept hearing, get lost. Get lost. <laughs> I mean, either one possibly makes you, sense, though. I could see him saying either one. You got so to ask. You got to clear that's... your head, get lost. <laughs> This um, mission is only for like the stable, so clear-headed <laughs> folks. Yes. <laughs> give, gotta give him a second, and if you don't clear your head, don't come back. <laughs> so the two of you are heading off north. north. <laughs> back in the tiny hut. They're settling, getting ready. Would Viola see them? Because she was, like, kind of scanning. Well, like, he went farther They're probably going to go well off into whatever area. Leave, but would he yeah. would she like notice that Bo went and then Stay and ended up going the same direction later? You can give me a perception check. You're just kind of meandering out the hut. Mm. Is the hut yeah. visible? It's can you see through the walls from of it? The, you cannot see inside? through it. Uh you cannot see into the inside from the outside. But you can see the outside it from is... the inside. Correct. You can okay. see through it from the inside, but you can't like see a, through it from the outside. Yeah. One way, or yeah, one way mirror. Think of it that mm -hmm. way. Or yeah, maybe it's like two way. From the outside, no, maybe it's two way. From the outside, though, it <laughs> looks like from the outside, it, it is like the same color of the grass or that ah. it is. Yeah, it blends in because I can like, change oh, whatever cool. color. I love so, that. Okay. Yeah. So the two of them head off. The three remaining 
are back in the hut. We'll, we'll go over to where Bo is waiting for Stan. So Bo is waiting up in a tree until he saw Stan walk of course underneath. He is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I assume Stan just... Sebo. <laughs> I don't know. Do we want to do? You hiding very do I do perception versus stealth? <laughs> we can if you're very purposely hiding from her. Let's do it. I mean, he's before. he's hiding. Okay. So. That's no not one. great. Oh, maybe That's not. a 21. Oh, he actually does win. He's got a 25. Dang. I rolled an 8. <laughs> I got a 16. A tw- <laughs> 21 from an 8. That's that's our girl. <laughs> but when he sees her walk by her, make his way down the tree, so he's behind her <laughs> um, <laughs> after a certain point. Stan, what was that? Since Stayan didn't see him, she's going to turn around and she's almost ready to cast something until she realizes it's Bo. <laughs> She'll put her hands by her side and then cross her arms and look at him. What was what? You know what I'm asking. Oh, I heard a tale. I did hear a tale growing up about that. Many a time. And you decide now is the pertinent time to bring it up. Why not? Well, one? I mean, who's Nora to us? She helps. She seems trustworthy. Not entirely to me. All right. Also, besides that, why would you just bring it up like that? Because we were sharing things. And it seems like it went along with what was being shared and talked about. Oh, everyone was talking about somebody that died a horrific death. I didn't say you died a horrific death. The person in your tale did. Yes, but also people exaggerate things. But then you are doubling down on it not being made up. A tale can be real. Possibly. I mean, I didn't. I don't know if the story itself the exact events of the story or something that actually happened. I know it is a story that I heard. And I know that stories, at least according to Snow, can be real. Doesn't mean they're literal. Then why didn't you just ask me? Yes, Mr. Open Book. Asking you questions doesn't actually seem to get us very far. You had asked me about something that specific. Not in front of everyone. I would say they got the tale wrong. Your sources suck. My sources do (laughs) suck. They're miners from Eustrom. They all suck. Don't they dig? Yeah. They can dig their own graves for all I care. You don't realize you hated them that much. But, yes, the information was not accurate. I'm sorry that I got a story that I'd heard told many a time in different ways every time by miners. How are so many people even talking about this? I don't know. I didn't think to ask. It didn't mean anything to me then. I was happy to Bring be able it up. to listen to a story. Hmm. I apologize if my bringing it up made you uncomfortable. Did you think it wouldn't? I honestly don't know with you. You react differently than expected to many things. It's hard to gauge exactly how anything is said or done is going to... What reaction it's going to elicit from you. Well, it listed nothing until you're just like, by the way, his name was Bo. Exactly. Are you thinking at you that point? You could have blocked it off. But you were wrong. What was the actual tale? One, he didn't go off alone. He brought his family with him. So, there's that. Also, this happened over a century ago. So, okay. I don't see how it's still alive over there. They also couldn't have found his body. So... There are multiple different weird things that just seem like they made it up. They probably did to make it more interesting. Or their half-drunk states confused it with other stories. Who was it that told you it? Many different old miners. They sit around, they chat, they drink when they're not on shift. They tell stories to each other to pass the time because there's not much else to do when you're waiting around. How old? How old? Yes. Maybe I'll pay how them a visit. These people were. <laughs> it would have just been. I mean, it's been passed along. Young and old, it didn't make a huge difference. 
You had some, but there were older people who were telling it. I mean, Eustrum's a lot of humans, so they wouldn't be living a whole century, a whole century usually. Stormfall got passed along through generations. There are some dwarves, sure. A few half elves, halflings, your typical scattered mixed makeups. It's just one of those stories that apparently caught intention and would be told along with many other legends to scare people or to pass the time. As far as I know, no one ever took it seriously, except to warn people from leaving. Well, they should take it seriously. But apparently they got quite a bit wrong. Yeah, but that didn't mean that it ended nicer. You went to the guardianship, I went with their family. So you knew them personally? Yes. When why I... did you choose... You what? Can go. So I was going to ask, why did you choose to carry a dead man's name? It was the name that came up. To mind. It must have been someone important to you. Well, yes. We were friends. When I left Vendela to go to the guardianship, I went to Ustrum as a wayward point because there was a caravan leaving from there. So I went with the caravan, which his family was there, and we became friends. How many were in his family? He had two daughters and a wife. Do you remember their names? To be honest, not the youngest daughter's name, but he had someone named Older One, I guess you could say. She was still quite young. Her name was Eleanor. That's a beautiful name. I'm sorry that you lost them. Yes, they... The children died when Gen fell. The wife was caged along with her husband. That's horrible. Indeed. So it's not some kind of fun tale. No. No, it's not. I'm very sorry for your experiences and for your loss. Well, just don't haphazardly bring up things like that. Not used to working with friends. So I'll try to learn better for the future. All right. Thank you for clarifying. Well, I don't like the idea of that being mistold if it's going to be told. That is also fair. Is that all you want to know? I don't suppose you'll actually say what your actual name is. Why do you want to know? Because I'd rather not look at you and think of a dead man walking. But rather someone who still lives in spite of what he's seen and done. Well, I mean, technically, my actual name is considered a dead man walking. So which one would you I'd rather? rather actually know who you are. I may remember your friend. I'll act pray to Atala and some model for your friend. But I'd rather know who you are. Because there is a weight and a measure of trust in names. And you may be a dead man walking to your family. But you are not a dead man walking to me. Well, I don't if know. If there's something you want to know about me, we can make an exchange of knowledge. What is the full tale about your disagreement with your parents? It was a lot of disagreements. When I was very young, I took after them quite a lot. And then when I was two, um, I began to change. I slowly turned into looking much more like how I now look, except child size at first, of course. And people don't take nicely to changes they don't understand, especially when there starts to be magic involved and your little girl can suddenly heal people and cause other things to happen. Beacons of light keep people from dying just by being near her sometimes, it becomes unsettling. And I let my drive for following who I first knew just as Lady of the Roses, or the name Atala was actually discovered for me, following her will above maintaining a good relationship with my family. Came to head, and I decided to leave. Now, how do I know you won't mess up and say my actual name. I, despite my lack of tact with stories, I tend to be careful with my words. 
time. My real name is Varen Leodon. I knew it! Um. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I forget, does Stan Sorry. actually know anything about that person? I don't like think any, so. I think Catherine does, but I don't think Stan has heard anything about that family, unless she does a history check. I don't think you've d had a chance to do one. Does Stan know anything about this family? You are welcome to roll a history check. Cool. Spam some guidance with that. Now I'm going to use my inspiration because I got a plus zero. <laughs> I got a number. I got a number. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. These are not good rolls. That's a seven. Grand total? With the inspiration she and guidance. One. She rolled a natural one and she rolled a five. She has a oh. plus zero modifier to history and she rolled a two <laughs> for guidance. She's wise. She's not smart. <laughs> oh, I thought this was the moment it was all going to bust wide open. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> the name does not. I mean, it's it's an elvish, an elvish name. That sounds much more elvish than Bill Evanwood. Yes. It suits you. But Bill, you will remain amongst everyone else until you decide that it's time to reveal your actual name. I don't want to go by that name. Why not? Because that person's dead. You keep saying you're dead, you're a dead man walking. I know your parents think you're dead because you were at, or your family thinks you're dead because you were again getting got destroyed, etc. Why do you insist that you're dead beyond that? I just prefer to think of that person as being dead at this point. And I would rather live as a different name and give that name life. Well, if we ever go back to Eustrum, I wouldn't use that name. But they can try and say something. They can. Granted, I have no desire to go back there. I don't know if you actually do. So. Mm, I mean, I basically stepped there, slept there for one night and then we left. To be honest, it was kind of not the greatest first place to visit leaving Fendella. Going from a city of the Crystal <laughs> City to... Yes. <laughs> it only went up from there. Thank you. For what? Trusting me. Well, kinda. What does that mean? Hmm? What does that mean? I mean, I felt kind of like I needed to set this tale straight. So somewhat more impulse of that than just deciding to uh, talk about it. But beyond that, thank you for trusting me. You're welcome. Alright, well, if you want to go back, I am not sleeping in the tent. I'll be outside. Alright. Any particular reason I should give? Or just... They're going to wonder where you are. Well, to their knowledge, you and I aren't even having this conversation. No. They know we both left, though, and perhaps I came across you, as I was clearing my head as I told them, and you said you're going to be spending the night outside? Yeah, I'll or... be going outside the tent. They'll see me. I still have to put All up right. the alarm and protect Cherry. I don't get the affection for the horse, but... Yes. <laughs> Very well. Thank you. And I apologize once more. Mm, it's fine. I just didn't realize news broke out or anything like that. I still don't understand how they even came to these dis conclusions. If a man left and was never seen again, people will talk. Especially in... I mean, it's not a small town, but imagine a hundred years ago it was much smaller than it is. Rumors, legends, tales, they long outlive the ones they were originally about. Hmm. I think Snow could have a lot to say on that subject. I almost like their version better. Well, whether we like something or not doesn't take away from the truth or untruth of it. Enjoy your walking in the woods. And she'll just nod and turn to leave. She'll go a few steps and she's going to stop, turn around and say, If you ever sneak up on me like that again, I can't promise I'll manage to actually hold back what I was going to send out to you. Sure. You've seen what I can do to a tree. <laughs> Don't make me do it to you. <laughs> I'm not some stupid tree. No. That would be a much smarter tree. I'm a much smaller target. Yes, but I perhaps had much more practice hitting smaller targets than big ones anyway. I'm sure just nod at that and turn to leap. Walk away. 
head back to the tiny hut. Bo's going to attempt to hunt before going to put up the alarm and going to bed. Give me a survival check. All right. He's going to use his bat also to run surveillance to have his bat help him with his hunting. Jeez. I got an eight and I got a four. So Plus. an 11 or <laughs> 16. So you don't need to mark the die. You find enough for tonight. It gets It's enough. Back... As you guys make your way, well, eventually, you go hunting. Uh, Stan starts making her way back. Back at the hut, they were essentially, you know, kind of shutting down for the night, uh, just getting ready to relax and such. Is there anything that you guys in particular, Snow or Viola, wanted to do? Nora is preparing herself for, for sleep in that same fashion in, like, you know, dressing down. She does, you know, remove that armor that she's wearing. It's very easy to note. She wears a very thick armor and she looks very similar to when you saw her in her room. Just very felt, not quite to the point of sickly, but definitely she's small uh, frame. She does remove her dagger again and sets out bedroll and whatever else that is not featured in the hut. I don't know if the hut comes with little beds. <laughs> No. <laughs> Dang. And here I thought it was special. <laughs> we yet. need the mansion for that. Is there anything you guys wanted to do while the other two were still out? Or when the other or when Stan returns? No, Viola would have just taken off her armor and put out her bedroll and laid on her back and looked like Okay. Give me a quick perception check as you guys are getting ready for the evening. <laughs> we're well into the evening. Twenty-four. Ooh. Well, okay. <laughs> Viola, while you are taking your armor off and getting yourself ready, you do note very similarly to when you saw Nora last that she has the dagger removed, but her firearm is still at her side, um, even as she's also lying down and also very clearly looking up at the stars and seeming to enjoy the sight of it. Stay in when you return. Anything you'd like to do? You do note the same thing when you walk in. Everyone's relaxed. We're, we're all we're all chilling. Stars are beautiful tonight. You would also note that Nora had her firearm still around her. She'll make the note and then probably just she'll sit down beside Snow, wherever he is. Okay. And just he is just writing something. She'll just lightly nudge him and say, "You're a much better storyteller than I, and I haven't appreciated the skill until now." Just needs practice. Mm -hmm. She needs a lot of practice. <laughs> I didn't think it was that bad. <laughs> I didn't even think I it was that it bad. I say it with love, Stan. <laughs> it's it's exciting. not on the same level as Snow yet. No. Nor do I think I will ever be, because that's not who I am. That's who Snow is. You could. Hmm. If you wanted to. And I don't know if I'll ever have the passion for it that you do. But I do appreciate a well-told story. And thought you should know that. If you notice... Snow is currently writing a little short story about the stars. So you even write your own? I just repeat what I hear. Somebody has to start it. So how does one make a story true? Speak it. How did I make the tiny hut? I willed it to happen. Reality isn't just willing what you want and it happening. Well, I will for you to see in front of you an image of a rose. And you see... In front of you, there is an image of a rose just floating there in the air. But that doesn't mean it's a real rose. Are you not really seeing it? I'm seeing it, yes. And she'll reach out to touch it. Sight not real? Fingers go through it. I think I see what you're saying. Try smelling it. She will try smelling it. It's better not smell like an armpit. You'll <laughs> use presentation to, to make it smell like a, a rose. <laughs> Viola busts out laughing exactly like that if she heard that. I sang a story of safety, and here is the hut. Sounds like reality can be whatever I want. That seems dangerous. Isn't everything? Aren't you? Oh, well, yes, but. Well. You like to turn ways of thinking upside down, don't you? Gotta get a new perspective on things every once in a while, don't you think? Old ideas might get stale. I've only known one perspective. It's interesting to find new ones. And that's why you gotta keep moving. There's always more to see, more to experience, more to learn. I've moved around a lot. 
probably not as much as you or Bo or even Viola. I mean, if you just came from Ustrum to here, that's. I travel throughout the country a lot, chasing dark, okay. chasing peace. Well, maybe that was your problem then. What you looked for was the dark, and so that's what you found. And how come? So we're saying we look, we find what we look for. You're more likely to see what you look for. What if you don't find what you're looking for? Maybe you're not looking for the right thing. Or maybe you're not looking hard enough. I'll let you get back to your story writing. What are you looking for? At this point, I'm not sure. Which you probably say is the first problem. <laughs> I was thinking that's fair. <laughs> so my instinct is to look for the dark. To bring light. But are you trying to bring light? Or are you simply trying to remove the dark? Therein lies the question. I think it's better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. Perhaps. That wasn't original, by the way. Doesn't make it less true? No, I just don't, didn't want you to give me credit for it. Learned that one in that tavern in Ustrum. Good for you. I'm glad you were able to learn something there. And learn something anywhere. Yes. From right here, I can learn about the stars. And I can learn a story to tell about them. Well, I hope you'll tell us the story once you've finished it. Right, Viola? I was on mute. Yep! <laughs> <laughs> Someone cast silence on Viola. <laughs> in my head, I forgot the mind link was only the bow. <laughs> if that's still open, Bo just hears the app in his head real quick. <laughs> if he did, he would just ignore it. <laughs> He's like, oh, Viola again. <laughs> Talking to herself. Mm -hmm. In the morning, let me know what you want me to try to send to Taryn. Thank you. Of course. She is important to you. And with that, Stayan's going to start preparing herself for bed. Getting out her bedroll and hanging it up. Okay. Long rest. <laughs> Sounds like it's long rest time. With that, uh, you guys cozy yourselves up in your bedrolls with the sky overhead, but protected by the magic of the wonderful tiny hut and an alarm, I think. And you guys honestly get an earlier rest than you probably have ever gotten in a while. Or in a while. Or have ever. I'm going to say ever. It's more dramatic. We go to bed early for once. Yeah. Wake up, invigorated, stay in, rolls me a wisdom save. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> that is a 13. You rest, you sleep, and when you wake up, you find you've not been interrupted by a dream. There's no lingering image in your head. Just a lingering feeling. Just the feeling that seems to kind of cloak you the way that the dark had when you were within the mist, but this is something warm. Something as if you had really gotten comfortable in, in uh, your sleep. And it takes its time to fade as you're waking up. She got a hug. The morning sun is rising, a little cloudier maybe than it was yesterday. But overall, an uninterrupted sleep. The alarm didn't go off. Nobody came barging through. What are you guys up to this morning? Start making preparations to head further on. Yeah. Wait. To the temple place, ideally. And also we'll try to catch uh, Snow whenever he can, whenever she can, to figure out what message he wants to send. Oh, you didn't have to catch him. He's ready there with a slip of paper. Like, okay, first thing in the morning, go. Ready, go. Say this. He's ready. <laughs> Say these words. When do you want to do that? Stay in figures that Snow won't be able to focus until he knows if his sister is okay or not. So probably pretty early in the morning, she'll just go ahead and cast sending with whatever message he hands her. Just sort of sitting on her bedroll, probably didn't even make it past that. <laughs> <laughs> She's up, the notes in her face. Correct. Read this. <laughs> Correct. So will be like, all right, we'll do this. I'm sure everything's fine. And then she will cast sending, reaching out to Taryn Brincaron. You send out your prayer for this focus and you cast sending. Can I please have... David, Josh, and Cassie, mute or remove your headphones. What are you saying to Taryn Brancaren? This is Snow's friend. He had a weird dream about you and Vendela. Wanted to make sure you're okay. He loves you so much, Taryn. 
There's a brief pause. And for just a second, you're not completely sure that the magic actually went through. And then you hear, almost surprised, not sure, but you do get a response. And you hear a soft voice, a manner kind of similar almost to Snow's demeanor. And you can kind of picture this girl in your head from his descriptions. And you hear her say, Oh, tell him I'm fine. He doesn't need to worry or contact me this way again. Enjoy his stories. He has a lot of them. And the message ends. All right. Well, she's fine. She's absolutely fine. What did she fine. say? She said you don't need to worry about her. And that uh, I should enjoy your stories. You have a lot of them. She seems surprised, which honestly anyone would probably be by hearing a stranger's voice in their head suddenly. But he's fine. Insight check. <laughs> She I got is an 11. Training, right? She's like an understudy. I got a 21. <laughs> you get the stains being truthful. She might not have told you the whole truth. Anything else? She's, uh, she said not to contact her this say? way again. Did she say why? No. Just that you don't need to worry. She sounded fine. I'm sure she's fine. Viola's gonna go hang out with Cherry. <laughs> <laughs> Viola Stay will <laughs> put a hand on Snow's shoulder and she's not really sure what else to do. What's wrong? Nothing. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Insight check. Insight check? <laughs> 17. Yeah, I rolled a two, so that was a 12. <laughs> okay. What's wrong? Well, I don't know, do I? No. But what are you thinking? Do you think she'd lie to you? Do you trust her? Not about that. Not about what? Herself being fine? Something is wrong. I know something is wrong. What makes you think that? The dream I had. The fact that apparently you can't just take a teleportation circle into the city like she said they did. And the fact that she said to not contact again. I mean, some people just have strong reactions to <coughs> strangers in their mind. Perhaps that's it. Part of it. When she said that, it doesn't mean we have to abide by it. I will reach out to her again, perhaps not today. But I'll reach out to her again for you, if you would like. Well, it wouldn't do any good. If she doesn't want it. I'm sorry, it's not the answer you were looking for. And stay and will give him a hug. Hopefully not quite as awkward as the one she usually gives. She's had a little bit of practice with this by now. Is she in armor yet? She's slept in her half plate. Then you don't feel if he returns it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps there was. I pray that the light of the gods be at her side, guiding her. He just sits down on the ground with his staff in his lap and starts making uh, flower crowns for everyone present. Doesn't say anything else. Okay. Then stay and we'll get up and start packing things up to head out whenever people are ready. Viola, you were just with, you were over with Cherry? Yeah, she was just hanging out with her, make sure she got fed. Just her Viola's idle chit chat to fit chat to fit silence while nap. Are you chit-chatting with Cherry? Mm -hmm. Give me an animal handling check. Come on, Cherry. 
and Cherry. <laughs> 18. It seems Cherry woke up on the right side of the bed this morning, and you go over there, or maybe Cherry is just too tired to deal with you and your nonsense. So she uh, <laughs> lets you pet her, lets you talk idly at her, and is generally easy to prepare for the day whenever you guys are ready to leave. Wonderful. When Bo seems stay in, he's also going to ask her about the sending thing. Because <laughs> he needs that one mailman. sent to uh, Helena. How'd it go? Got any more? All right, do you know what message you want? Um, just tell her we got her things. That's it? Do you want to try and arrange a meetup? You get plenty of words, I think, with this. Well... Yeah, I mean, she usually would just say, oh, go here, so. Right. Then stay and we'll attempt another sending. Uh, this time to Helena, who she's met, so. She has met Helena, that's true. You do know her. And her message is, Bo found your things, meet up. Have you sent Viola's letter yet? I need information about Taryn Bryn Karen. I'll owe you, thanks. Second. And you do get a response. Hope I can count it out. You hear that uh, seemingly at all hours of the day, shining voice, <laughs> effervescent. Morning people. <laughs> you know those people. I don't think she ever sleeps. And you Lots hear, <laughs> you hear the response. Lovely, and I hope it's everything this time. He'll be met in the city, and I'll have them talk to you too, darling. And yes. And yes what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little out of order. <laughs> Stan looks back at Belle. I don't know how she's such a morning person, but she says he'll be met in the city. What city? And she hopes it's everything this time. She didn't say. All right. Tomorrow we can ask for more information. <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. Stay in messenger service. At your service, apparently. <laughs> I'm for it. <laughs> She'll look over at Viola. If you need any messages sent, just wait till tomorrow for me. But then we can do it. I already got my one cent, I think, that I, I really needed done, so I should be good for a while. Unless... Hmm... You can't send one to so Buttercup. I, 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 oh, that's not what I was thinking about, thank you very much. Fine, I'm not telling you my ideas. I don't think she's intelligent enough. <laughs> we love your ideas. Bo doesn't. But that was the DM, not Nora. Nora has been I know. not. <laughs> I know. <laughs> She's been outside and up early and prepared to do things, but moving slowly. Only a little slowly. And just a cough here or there. She's all right. It's fine. So you guys handle what you need to handle. You pack up your tiny tent, tiny hut, and you make your way. <laughs> Making our way downtown. <laughs> making your way, to, making way. your way to Undra. You already know you're not terribly far. You're only what, like a quarter mile down the road or something. 15, 20 path, minutes. Yeah. If that. yeah, yeah, not far at all. At yeah, but there was nothing else at the campsite you guys wanted to do. Cool. You are able to don your armor, your traveling gear, grab your belongings. Bo, can you please make me a charisma saving throw? Ten. With all your belongings packed up, with Cherry being strangely cooperative this morning. You guys make your way down the path and towards the hovel at Undra. And I think that's a pretty solid place for us to end tonight's session. No! Oh, I want to look inside! <laughs> I would love to have you guys look inside. I also need to sleep. <laughs> Which is still going to take me another hour. <laughs> Happens every time. Thank you.
reminding you from all of us here at Tales from the Catacombs, catch up and recapture your favorite moments by subscribing to the channel. We appreciate you journeying with us to bring clean content to the world of tabletop RPGs, especially as we are growing and we're even doing some future very exciting collaboration, which I cannot wait to tease you all about. It's going to be so much fun. Um, a particularly huge thank you to my players whose links are in the description below. Please take a moment to follow these tremendous people and their exciting endeavors. David, who plays Bo, Catherine, who plays Stayin, Cassie, who plays Viola, and Josh, who plays Snow. I am Brenna. I am your storyteller for this adventure, and we will see you back here next time. Safe travels until we meet again.